All right, the injuries for today, guys who won't practice, um, Timor, knee, Garoppolo, foot, Ridgeway, peck, Womack, protocol, Debo, ankle, knee, Kevin Givens, knee. Um, the rest of these guys will all be limited. Um, Christian McCaffrey, knee, Armstead, foot, ankle, Kerry Hyder, ankle, Ambry Thomas, ankle, Brock Purdy, oblique. Go ahead. <clears throat> Define limited on a day where you don't do much on the field. Um, they, they'll be more limited than everybody else. I guess everyone can jog a little bit. They won't even do that. You said um, Brock is uh, limited with the oblique. Is, is the rib not? I'm sorry, oblique that? slash rib. What, You're on it. Rib? Can you say what the rib element of that injury is? Um, that is just something that connects here. There's a number of them. It's not right. Do you feel that he's still on track to play Thursday night, Kyle? And then, what kind of advice do you give quarterbacks going in to play Seattle the first time? Um, and we'll find out that as these two days go. We don't have much time, but um, you know, we're not going to try to figure that out today or tomorrow. It'll probably be on Thursday where we have the best chance to know. Um, going into Seattle, like you tell anyone on the road, but Seattle, I think. Um, you know, I don't think I've ever been anywhere louder than there. Just, and we know how their fans are. We know how that stadium is. Uh, you got to be ready for. It. You can't expect to hear not just at the line of scrimmage, but also in the huddle a number of times. And um, it's a it's a big difference playing there. Can you get the acoustics going in, in Levi Stadium more so than the practice fields? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's a good question. We'll find out. Brock, is it, is it a pain tolerance issue, or is there a potential that he could do something to make it worse? If he plays? Uh, no, it's it's um, just can he play with it. Now, if he plays, he won't be able to make it worse. How has he been as far as the getting the play call in and getting it you know, um, out to the, the players in, in that process? Uh, he's done a good job of it. I mean, the more he does it, the better he gets. Um, not that we only had a couple off last week, which um, was pretty good. We don't make it very easy. Facing a team that has such an obvious statistical target on their back in terms of the way that teams are running on them, how how is that approached? I mean, each game has its own individual personality. You just prepare yourself for them to be better that night. Um, I mean, we always, regardless of who we play, we always have a goal to try to be 50-50. Um, you know, I thought Tampa Bay was one of the um, better run defenses we had seen on tape, and I think they were up there statistically too. And then you just never know how the game's going to be. Uh, how many, if you break some long ones, stuff like that, how many runs you get uh, attempted. Um, I know their numbers are struggling, but it's really never been that way when we played Seattle. They're a tough group to run the ball on. Um, I know they haven't been this year statistically, but um, usually when you are struggling, and I know them meeting us here in two days, uh, I know that's something they're going to try to take away, and it's something they've done a very good job of there in the past. From a production standpoint, we can see what Christian brings to the offense. When you, when you sit down and watch tape, how do you see him elevating the offense in terms of maybe what pops up and opening things for other people, things like that? Um, I, I think it limits a lot of stuff people want to do versus us. I mean, anytime you have um, a commitment to the running game and ways that you can think of how to stop that, but at any time, um, one of those runners can be out on a pass, not just against corners, but also linebackers and safeties and some of the things you can do formationally. And, and when you have other guys in there, you can hand the ball off to, too. It just, I think it limits guys on what they want to get away with. Um, you know, you can always get the right run calls and stuff to stop some things. But if you have that called on the wrong thing, how bad of a position that could put somebody in in coverage. And I think Christian does it a lot. I think a number of our players do. And kind of just have to simplify things for the defense when it's like that. Is there a, a word was that Evo will return at some point during the regular season? Is there a specific timeline for him as far as weeks? Um, I mean, there's four weeks left in the season. I think they told me three ish is our expectation. So, right in that area. The, um, the conversation that you had with Brock in the in the locker room after the game is that normally a conversation you would have had. On a, on a Monday, but because everything was so condensed this week that you wanted to debrief him? Yeah, a little bit, and um, guys got out of there fast. I think everyone was in a hurry because of the short week, and um, I just I got, I went into my press conference, I think, a little late. I think I stopped by when I came back. I think that's when it was, and it just seemed empty, and he was sitting there by himself, and I wasn't going to see him yesterday with how the day went, not too much at least, so I wanted to talk to him about the week and how he did in the game, how he was feeling, and what was coming ahead. Touched on uh, Ray Greenlaw's play in the conference call the other day. I'm curious, when you think back to when he when he was drafted as as like a fifth round draft pick. Did you 
see things in him right away that indicated to you that he could be this kind of player, or did it just sort of happen that uh, way? He stuck out pretty early. I mean, he, he was a linebacker we liked a lot. Um, I think we had a third round grade on him, and we weren't able, we didn't think we could go for a linebacker that early, and similar to um, Kittle. Um, he felt we liked Kittle a lot too, um, but we couldn't go up there where we thought they were going to go. And uh, I think Greenlaw, we got him in the fifth, um, so he ended up falling a little bit less than we expected, and we felt very fortunate to get him there. Uh, we had just brought in Quan Alexander. That's why we didn't totally need a linebacker at the time, um, but we felt fortunate in the fifth round that he was available. So you could see right in camp uh, that we got a, a much more talented linebacker than it seemed in the draft. And um, when he got on the field and base, he was making plays, and then when Quan went down, it gave him so much more reps. And he only got better when that happened. Did you ever cross paths with Mike Leach? I never did. I think I've, I've met him before. Um, I met him a long time ago in Indianapolis. Just got introduced to him. But and he's been so cool to watch over the years. When I was at Texas, we always went against him at Texas Tech. And um, he beat us a number of times. And I was always so jealous watching that offense, being a receiver, watching Wes Welker have like 25 targets at the end of the game. Um, I definitely wouldn't have got that, though, if, even if I was there. Um, but it was, it was just so cool to watch it, all the people who have followed him, gone and done stuff. And I was real sad to hear that this morning. Yeah, that was, Part of that offense sort of influenced the game over the... Um, I mean, I think it just it showed everybody that anything's possible. I mean, they, they used to look that at that time it looked way different than what everyone else did. Um, I also used to always think it was so cool just looking at his call sheet and it just being an index card, um, which basically is the same thing as just writing a few things on your hand. Um, but the way he did it, the way he owned it, the way it worked everywhere he went, well, I think a lot of people tried to be like him um, and do things like him, but it didn't seem like everyone did as consistently as well. With Debo, we saw him very emotional the other day, obviously, when he was being carted off, and it's not something you see from him a lot. Was there a fear when you saw that, that, that this was it for the season, and, and what is probably the obvious level of relief that it isn't? Um, I, I, I didn't see exactly how he got bent. I was too... Um, flustered and talking to the ref and you know the situation and then there were so many people around him um, I didn't get a chance to see him um, crying like that I saw when I got home um, the highlights on Sports Center and stuff and saw how scary it was and how worried he was and was able to talk to him after that and really understand where he was in that moment but I think a lot of guys are like that I mean and some guys handle it differently. I can imagine being in that situation, everyone watching you, you kind of just want to hide because um, whether you cry, whether you're mad, whatever it is, I feel like the emotions are always equal with all those guys, what they put into it. And when that stuff happens, you never know if you never know if you're done for the, the week the, or the game, the year, or your career. And so lots of emotions go through that for those guys because it's not just our season, it's the livelihood of those players. How ready are those guys other than, than Brandon to step up and and you know, for Juwan to, to become you know, an every down receiver and for the other guys to have increases in their roles too. I think the guys are more than ready. I mean, um, I think those guys love the opportunity. They're always wanting to be out there more. They're mad I'm not in five wides every play. Um, so those guys relish us. I mean, I know they did a hell of a job versus the Rams. Um, you know, even that week, we thought we were going to get Juwan. We ended up knocking him towards the end of the week, and um, a number of guys had to step up. So our guys will be ready on Thursday. Um, we had to go do that last year, I believe, um, without Debo versus Seattle. Um, be the same thing this week, and I know our guys are ready and excited for their offs. Andy Gray had his first reception the other day. How is it? A normal process getting a rookie receiver ready to play what's kind of distinguished his first year in the, in the nfl for you um i think i think danny has gotten the urgency that he's had he has really been picking it up here in these last six weeks six weeks the opportunity hasn't been there for him uh, he had a little bit more earlier in the year um, those opportunities have gone away, but his play has gotten a lot better. Um, so we felt it's, it's a matter of time where he can help us out there. And um, he's doing things the right way. And he's gotten in the game a hair more. You know, BA's um, conditioning has been so well that that's why he hasn't got as many reps and stuff. But he got there and at the end of the game, caught a slant versus zero um, in some tough weather. Um, he's been doing a good job in practice. And he's been waiting for this moment. And um, we'll see if he gets more ops. Ray, Ray, I know Ray Ray is in the same size as Debo, but... Can you use him in a, in a similar way that you use Evo? Yeah, you can use him similarly. Um, and, you know, they're definitely different bodies. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, but Ray, Ray, don't tell Ray Ray that. He gets extremely offended. Um, if you put Debo on any run and you tell him that he can only do these but not that one, you're going to have to prepare or make time for an hour meeting with him later. Um, <laughs> 
because he's going to convince you otherwise. And that's why he's been such a good football player his whole career. You hear about how he was in high school and college and stuff. And Ray Ray is a bulldog out there, and he doesn't think about his size. Something out of you about Geno Smith. And was, was he a guy over the last 10 years that you looked at and thought, you know, if he got a chance, maybe? Well, I mean, I think... I think everyone, you know, when you come out of college and you're drafted that high, I don't think anyone disagreed with his throwing talent and the stuff he did in college. Um, quarterback, I mean, it's so hard to play in this league, What, depending on the situation, depending on your um, experiences and X's and O's and what you've done, the talent around you. Um, so you never really count anyone out, especially with ability. I've never known him personally, but um, I know that he's talented. I know he's had good games, and he's been given this opportunity this year. And the way he came out, everyone noticed right away, and he really has and wavered all year, and um, I'm, I'd like to say I'm happy for him because I'm happy for anybody to do stuff like that. Um, wish he did another division or a different year, but hopefully he'll struggle Thursday. Kyle, with Purdy, with part of what's made him so effective is his ability to be off schedule and, and do stuff after he's rushed. With a rookie quarterback, I assume that can make a coach nervous. Do you put parameters on him, or at this point, do you trust him to kind of make plays? I mean, when there's not a play there or the rush comes, there's never in the history of at least me coaching where you put parameters on guys and say, don't react, just sit there and get killed um, and we'll punt it. And it's always a reaction. Um, sometimes it's to not take a sack and bounce pass it to someone, to throw it out of bounds. Sometimes it's to break a tackle. Sometimes it's just to have an unbelievably accurate throw, but there's lots of different skill sets that the 32 guys got to choose from when things do break down. And um, Brock, since he's been here and on his college tape, one thing he does have a knack for is his foot quickness in the pocket, when and how to get out of there. Now, if guys are just doing that as their first read and they're looking for off schedule plays as people are sitting in front of them open, waving their hands, that's when you start to talk about a guy because um, it's really hard to be successful that way in this league. It's a matter of time. Um, what's cool, been cool about Brock is I think he's made those plays when he's had to, when there's been a rush in his face, when something's flashed, he's had to escape and he's been able to extend some plays, keep them going and um, it's led to some big plays for us so far. Thanks guys. Uh, Seattle offense a bit different than what you guys were facing in week two where it gets more pass oriented with Gino and what he can do now. I think the offense, from where it's changed, from when we first played these guys, it's opened up a lot more. I feel like they're taking uh, a lot more shots downfield and, and completing a lot. They're a very explosive offense with with DK and Lockett. Those guys can they can take the top off a of defense. So we have our hands full. They're always a tough matchup. We know this team is going to come out. They're going to they're going to play physical. They're going to compete. I mean, so it's uh it's always a fun matchup when the Niners and, and Seahawks get together. Also just said he thinks it's a little bit more of a rivalry right now with the coaching staffs than with the players. Would you agree with that? Uh, I mean, not for me. For me, it's, it's the next game that we have to win. So I don't see it as much as a rivalry. It's like this is our next opponent. They're in our division. We know how much this game means for where we want to go down the road. So it's a big game for that reason because it's the next one. You guys are obviously a little banged up on the interior of the defensive line right now. What's your just – state of confidence and, and the guys outside of Eric, of course. Yeah, I think uh, with our D-line, the, the cool part about it is we have a lot of guys who played a lot of ball, a lot of guys that we move around and try not to max those guys out, try to keep them fresh as possible. And that's I think that's how we're effective as a defensive line because we want to come in waves. So it's just a matter of it's always a it's a D-line by committee. And that's always been you know how we operate. Uh, so the guys – who we have feel like they can go out there and play well for us. What have you seen from uh, T.Y. McGill since he's been here? Yeah, T.Y., is, he's shown up, right? He's, he's made some plays where T.Y., is he's explosive. He's plays on the other side of the line of scrimmage a lot. So he has flashed and made some plays over the past few weeks. And I'm excited to where he can continue to grow, continue to learn, and, and uh, make even more plays in our scheme. But he's made a few plays, and I've been pleased with him. Sherman was on a, a conference call this morning with Prime and Somebody asked him, uh, who's the 49er you think should be in the Pro Bowl that hadn't been there before? He, big play Dre came out of his mouth before he, yeah. could, you know, before, before, the set, before the question was finished <laughs> answered. Just curious what you've seen from Dre this year. He talked about him a couple weeks ago, but he another, had another yeah. huge game. Um, where is he at in his, his evolution as a player now? 
I think Dre is Dre is playing as one of the best linebackers in the NFL right now. I mean, his game, his when you talk about, I mean, first of all, you talk about the speed, still that play where he's running down Tyree. I mean, show me another linebacker doing that. All right, uh, the interceptions he's made, just his plays, just all over the field, the tackling ability in space. He's probably one of the most confident guys in space and tackling who I have confidence in when the ball is thrown and there's a lot of space. If Dre is out there, there's no doubt in my mind that he's getting that guy down. So Dre is playing with very high confidence. He's playing fast, physical, and I love the enthusiasm that he's playing with out there because he's making a ton of plays, which creates that enthusiasm. He is all over the field making plays each and every week for us. And Dre is having having his best year of his career. He just has to keep going. He's so explosive that he's he's had some issues on occasion with being able to pull up in time because he's so quick to the <laughs> ball. But he hasn't had one of those in a while. And is, is that something that he's, he's sort of learned how to play in terms of yeah. control? Yeah. Few penalties, they'll slow you down. <laughs> so no, he's uh, he's played smarter in those situations when it comes to most of the time. When most of the time, those plays have come up when he's been around the quarterback and Dre is running f as fast as he can to get there, and he just has to play smarter, which he's done over the past few weeks. He's played smarter of knowing when to ease up and when to be able to just jump over the top if, if that's the if that's the case. But and you can't say enough good things about you know. That linebacker core we have with Dre, Fred, Aziz. I mean, those are three of the best linebackers in the NFL. So we're we're fortunate to have all three of those guys because they bring it each and every week. I mean, they're playing physical, they're playing fast, and they're playing with exceptional effort each and every week leading our team. All right. Thanks, guys.